Well, welcome back to another Life on Cars video. So, the Jaguar was being behaving itself of late. No faults to report, which is really good. So, it's a, it's a, probably a good time to change the topic a little bit and talk about something that, uh, that I refer to as preventative maintenance or safety inspections, you might want to call it. So, what am I talking about here? Well, you might be surprised to know that if you take your car in, to the dealership um, for a service, it's quite unlikely that they actually get to the point where they remove wheels and inspect various parts on the vehicle behind the wheel. They might look through the wheel and look at the brakes the best they can, but quite often on a service, unless they're actually replacing parts, they don't remove wheels. So that's the area we're gonna start in today. I'm just gonna show you the sort of things you need to be looking at around the wheels uh, of the vehicle and then we'll take a wheel off and we'll have a look at some of the preventative maintenance if you like or safety inspections that you can do around the braking and the suspension system on a vehicle just to make sure that there's nothing in there wearing out or nothing that might cause you further problems down the road and ultimately it might save you a bit of money so let's get stuck in and have a look at the Jaguar XK and let's make a start on some preventative maintenance tasks by the way, I hope you like my new sign. It was my birthday, June the 2nd, and my oldest daughter uh, bought me this sign, um, which I think is brilliant. So that'll be featuring in uh, quite a lot of the videos moving forward. Also, uh, you might have noticed that there's a bit of a better angle going on here. I've actually got a new tripod as well, which my youngest daughter bought for me. So I just want to say thanks to my, to my daughters for uh, for contributing some nice goodies uh, for the future of the channel. Hopefully there'll be, a, uh, especially if I'm doing close-ups and things, I won't be doing the old one-handed uh, mechanic, one hand on the camera, one hand on the spanner. That's a day, that, that's uh, in the past now. So uh, thanks very much, my lovely daughters, for, uh, for supplying these new bits. So let's get the car in the workshop and we'll start on the near side rear today. So obviously I need to get the wheel off, so I'm going to actually crack these nuts off while the, uh, the wheel's on the ground, otherwise it'll be spinning. Them all cracked off. I've just realised the strobing effect at the start of the video there is the fluorescent light in the garage. So I've just turned them off. I don't actually need them on because it's quite light still. So I'm just using the Jaguar jacking point. Just till the wheels off the ground, that's all we need. And uh, I'm going to place an axle stand 
just for safety precautions. Not that I'm planning to get underneath the car much today, but it's always a good idea to have a, an axle stand underneath the axle. Well, I've actually just put it underneath the subframe. All right, let's get the wheel off. So obviously an added bonus of doing a preventative maintenance job like this is you can check a lot of other things. So for example, I can, can have a good look at the tread on this tire, make sure there isn't any nasty screws that are trying to make their way into the tread. I can check the, um, the full circumference of the tire and just uh, look out for any cuts or anything like that. So yeah, it's, and then obviously on the vehicle as well, you've got an opportunity to, to have a look around with the wheel off and just visually check suspension, brake pipes, those sort of things. You might even want to put a bit of wax oil on the, on the, on the brake pipes where the metal bits are like I've done. Um, and just check around your springs and things like that. It's a good opportunity, like I say, you know, you've got the wheel off, you can have a good look with the lamp and, and check. But what we're in here today for is, like I say, we're going to do some preventative maintenance on the brakes. So, one of the things I've noticed straight away on this disc is I can see some high spots. You can see these marks here. That's quite a, a bad one there, and you can, I can actually feel that with my finger. And if you, if you look, that's actually where the brake pad's been sat. And this is what you sometimes find on vehicles where uh, the vehicle's maybe not getting used a lot, like a weekend car like mine is. And it's probably a bit of my own fault there. What's probably happened is, I, is I've washed the car and then I've parked it up and the brake hasn't been completely dry and it's caused um, where the moisture sat it's caused some corrosion to uh, to build up just on the face of the disc there and I've ended up with a bit of a high spot so I can take that off with a bit of uh, sandpaper um, or a bit of emery paper and just get rid of that that high spot there um, oh look there's a stone just caught in the top of the disc there look See what I mean about preventative maintenance, you just never know what you're going to find. So uh, I'll dig that stone out with a screwdriver, otherwise that could have ended up getting caught in the caliper or something. So the observant amongst you will have noticed that I've actually turned the car around and I'm on the offside of me now. One of my neighbours has decided to start using a still saw, cut some uh, pavement slabs, I think. Making a bit of a racket, so I've come in the garage, closed the door. And uh, just before we take the wheel off, I just wanted to show you something else, which is a good idea to remember to do. So just, just as the wheel's off the ground there, what you'll see mechanics do is they'll get hold of the wheel at sort of um, three o'clock and nine o'clock. And what I'm doing there is I'm just trying to I'm trying to rock the wheel left and right to see if there's any free play, which there isn't. Um, because if there was, it would indicate there's something wrong with a joint or a ball joint. And then I'm going to get a hold of it at um, six and twelve and do the same thing. Just a little bit, a little bit higher to get my hand underneath. And again, I'm looking for like any free play in the wheel bearing or something like that and there isn't on this vehicle so that's good then the other thing I need to do is I need this is an automatic so I need it in neutral it's in park at the moment so the wheels lock the handbrakes off but it won't turn what I want to do is I want to spin the wheel and I want to have a listen to any if there's any roughness or any noise coming from the bearing so there's 
two or three checks you can do before you even take the wheel off. So we've got it in neutral. Now I can hear a bit of the, I can hear a bit of noise from the brake pads just catching on the, the disc, which is normal. But it doesn't, there isn't any other noise, so that tells me that it sounds like the bearing is fine. Can't feel, hear any grumbling or any scraping noise and it seems to be. And the other thing obviously is um, once the, the handbrake's off and the car's in neutral, you know, what's nice to see there is the brake, it isn't dragging. You know, it's not, the, the brake's not sticking on. Otherwise it would be turned and then it would stop turn and stop so the fact that the, the wheel continues to spin like that means that um, the brake's not hanging in there so that's a good thing so I mean some of these things I'm doing you know it's a bit like what an old school mechanic would have done in the past uh, you know when I started work as a mechanic back in the 1980s when a car was serviced we always took the wheels off and we did brake inspections with the wheels off we even did servicing on the brakes which is you know I said servicing there not replacement so we would actually take the caliper off take the brake pads out um, grease them on the contact areas and then put them back in um, and you know make sure the, the brake pads were free etc so we, we really did quite a lot of um, quite a lot of things that aren't done anymore sadly and I think it's because the dealerships they're in a rush now they're all working against um, times for every job and uh, it's just not done anymore. You've probably got more chance of having your wheels removed. And um, the sort of checks that I'm doing today, done in, in an independent garage rather than a dealership. So what we're doing, I'm just wiping the inside of the wheel off. It's lovely and clean because I did, if you've watched any of my earlier videos, when I first got this car, I did take all the wheels off and clean them all on the inside properly. But the other reason for doing this, again, preventative maintenance, safety inspection. I'm just having a bit of a look to see if there's any signs of cracks in the wheel. Nowadays, um, a lot of vehicles do suffer from alloy wheel damage because the roads are so bad in the UK. Well, that's the first reason. There is a lot of potholes, but the second reason is to do with tire and wheel technology. Nowadays, we run a much uh, narrower sidewall or the aspect ratio of the tyre is very, very narrow. I mean, you can see on this Jaguar here that these ones are, are super, super narrow. And uh, that means there's not a lot of give in the tyre. So that means if you do hit the bump or a pothole or all the speed pumps that we have, uh, that force is transmitted into the wheel. And we are seeing a lot of alloys that are, are starting to crack. And obviously once it starts to crack, um, you know, that the alloy either needs replacing or it needs a specialist repair because uh, obviously it's not safe anymore and there's, it could, it could uh, the integrity of the wheel has, uh, has been uh, completely changed if it develops a crack. So I'm just looking at the, uh, the surface of the wheel. I'm looking at the edge of the wheel as well and I'm happy to report on this one here there's no signs of any any cracking and it's in good condition as well like I say keeping them clean taking them off once a year giving them a good clean um, inside as well as out it is a good preventative maintenance job You can see that mark there that's B 
been left from the uh, pad and again it's, it's left a little impression so I'm just going to polish that off. The whole reason I ended up doing this video for you was because I part, like I said, I parked the car up after I'd washed it. I was in a bit of a rush and I put it back in the garage. And what I should have done and what I always tend to do is when I've washed the car and the wheels, I normally just take the car around the block and apply the brakes a couple of times. And I would really advise you to do that. Don't, don't wash your car and then put it straight in the garage because you get this problem that I've had on this where I've had a the car was left parked up for three or four days and then we got a rusty impression of the brake pad on the disc and it left it surprising how fast because this is obviously just bare metal surprising how fast it corrodes and what I was getting I was getting a bit of a clicking noise it's been better weather here in the UK this last few days and I've been driving around with the wind at home and I could hear this click, 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 coming from the back, from the other side, from the near side rear. And what it was, it was the brake pad catching um, on the rusty mark that it had left. And even after like doing uh, five or six miles and pressing the brakes, it wasn't going away. Because the brake pad will really struggle to rub off um, a rusty high spot. It would take miles and miles and miles. So... Uh, It was my own fault really, uh, but then I've ended up thought, well, I'll do this video for you guys to show you some of the things you should be looking for. So, <clears throat> so first of all, the disc. Now, you just use your finger and you're looking for a bit of a lip. And if there is a bit of a lip developing, or, or shall I say quite a big lip developing, then the brake, the brake disc is starting to wear. And I am getting a little bit of a lip on these. Um, you can just probably see it there with the uh, video, but with your finger. I mean, it's not—it's nothing major at the moment, but there is a bit of a, a bit of. So that's the original thickness there, and then obviously the brake pads have started to wear the disc away, and we have a small lip, still perfectly serviceable at the moment, and there's no need to change the disc. Especially if the brake pads are fine, which they are. We'll have a look at those in a minute. But because there is some wear developing, what that tells me is when this set of brake pads are worn out, I'll need to do the discs as well. There would be no point in putting new brake pads onto this disc when it gets to the end of its life because the brake pads will need to try and bed into the shape of this disc rather than a flat disc. So that's why brake discs need replacing, because they eventually wear and you get this concave effect where the thickness of the disc is reduced. Like I say, these are perfectly serviceable. You can get them a lot worse than this. Um, but they may look, they, we'll have to have a look when they get to, when the brake pads get to the end of their life. But, and we'll see what it's like, but it'll be new discs almost guarantee it and uh, so that's what you look for you're looking for lips obviously really bad cases you can get cracks as well the other thing to look for is um, a blue tinge which would give you an indication that the disc being really hot and that could be that the car's being driven really hard or it could mean that the caliper is sticking and causing a heat buildup, so uh, yeah, that's what to look for on a disc. So, what about the actual brake pads? So, this is the metal part of the the pad here, so the back of the pad. And what I'm looking for is how much braking material is left. So, the braking material currently on this disc brake pad. Is from here to there so I've got a good probably 10 millimeters or more of um, brake material and that's a healthy brake pad 
there's plenty of life left in that um, that brake pad there. I'd be starting to get worried if it was getting down to about there, about half of that left. I've got a feeling these, if I remember looking at the service history, these brake pads were done about 4,000 miles ago, something like that. So they've started, to, there's a little bit of wear, um, but there's still plenty of life left. And like I say, I will not be changing these brakes until this gets down to about here and then we'll be looking to replace them but there's two pads and this is why we need to take the wheel off to do this job properly this is the outer pad but there's also an inner pad and that's harder to see so let me show you how you can check that one and much easier with the wheel off so we're looking at the the back of the carper and we've got this inspection hole here where we can peer through, we can see the disc here and we can see the inside brake pad there's the, the metal part of the pad and there, between there and there is the brake material so we can see that this brake pad is in a similar condition to the outer brake pad so we've got a similar amount of material left maybe a little bit less and that's normal actually because the inside pad with it being the one that's against the piston there's the piston there for the caliper it tends to be the pad that wears out first so there's another problem that again if you don't inspect the brakes properly with the with the wheel off you can end up where the inner brake pad wears to a point where it could be actually getting down to almost metal to metal or, or in the worst case scenario it is down to the metal but the outer pad still looks okay and some mechanics can be tricked by that and miss that the inner pad is worn out now you imagine trying to do that with a wheel on so let's have a look what I'm actually looking at here from here so I'm actually looking through this hole here so you imagine trying to do that with a wheel on it's almost impossible all the mechanic can really do is try to look from the rear side and maybe try and peer up or down at the, at the pad but it's really quite difficult to gauge the thickness of the inner pad without taking the wheel off I can also look down the the back of the between the disc which is here and the back plate which is that fella I can actually get a light and I can look down and check the condition of the inner surface of the disc again very tricky to do with a wheel on I can get a better I can bet oh, that's a good one there look I can get a better idea of the condition of the inner surface and again, mechanics can be tricked up because the outer part of the disc can look fine, but the inner part of the disc, if it's not checked, can, could actually be quite badly corroded. And it's difficult to see. And again, when they're doing an MOT as well, this is what they've got to try and assess is the condition of the disc. Now, obviously, when it's up on a ramp, and there is a quite a nice cutout on this Jaguar there, uh, where you can peep through and have a look and obviously we could rotate the disc as well to uh, check the, the full circumference of it so it might be too bad to do if you're doing an MOT inspection but uh, to do it properly the wheel has to come off So I've got an opportunity to inspect, now that the wheel's off and I'm happy with the brakes, I can inspect a lot of other components here, much easier. Uh, so starting off with the, the brake flexi. Now these are normally rubber on millions of vehicles, but the Jaguar is a bit special. And it actually comes with a steel braided flexible hose as standard on all four wheels. Uh, made by BF Goodrich, Goodrich 
um, steel braided hoses, that's a standard part on a Jaguar. But still needs inspecting, you know, it's a lot stronger than a, a rubber one. I've just given that a wipe over so you can see it a, a bit better. But what I'm doing is I'm checking the the ends of these where it turns into metal, um, just making sure that they're okay. And then the metal brake pipe there, mine looks a bit dark there and the reason why is because I have actually previously um, covered that in uh, wax oil to protect it. You will find there's a little bit of surface rust on, on these and what you're looking for, you're looking to assess that it hasn't gone from surface rust to badly pitted. And then obviously the other side of the brake pipe as well where it goes under the vehicle. You can have a, a closer look and see how that is. And not forgetting the other end of the flexi hose where it goes onto the caliper down there. Then after that, I'm just going to have a look at the bushes on the suspension. So, uh, get my screwdriver. So, just looking at these here for any splits or cracks. We already did the wiggle. A test with the wheel so we know everything's okay here's the top wishbone here just having a visual inspection of the um, ball joints and the bushings my coil spring as well coil springs break a lot on cars um, not necessarily on the Jags because it's a substantial coil spring as you can see it's a really meaty looking coil spring so it'd be quite unusual for one of these to break. But I can look at the shock absorber and see if there's any signs of dampness, um, any leaks from the shock absorber as well. And just a general condi condition check around here. I can also inspect the handbrake mechanism. You can see the cable there. It comes all the way down there. And then it hooks onto the, uh, the handbrake and you can see the spring and the mechanism there. Just have a look. Make sure there's no splits in that cable and everything looks fine. So yeah, it's preventative maintenance, spotting things early to, uh, to keep the vehicle safe and also to save you a bit of money. Some, like I say, if sometimes if things get to a point where they're at the end of their life, they could be dangerous. And catching things early and keeping on top of things is, uh, look at that, the magnets come out of the, <laughs> the torch. I'll take that off. Yeah, so uh, there you go. Inspection for safety and preventative maintenance of suspension and brakes on the rear of the Jaguar XK. So what have I learned from doing this uh, safety inspection, preventative maintenance inspection on this Jaguar rear wheel assembly and brake? Well, peace of mind, I know the brake's in serviceable condition as it is at the moment, but we do know that when these brake pads get towards the end of their life, it will need new discs as well, um, just because of the wear that's starting. That's only going to get worse as the brake um, wears down. So it'll be new discs and pads um, in the future. But it's not doing a lot of miles of this, so it may be that I end up doing discs and pads before the pads are worn out just purely because of condition deteriorating through lack of use. Over time, you know, standing over the winter, it might start to corrode a bit. So it's just one to keep an eye on. And like I say, um, if the car is, a, is an occasional car, if it's a weekend car, that's more the, all the more reason to do these kind of uh, inspections periodically, um, or especially just before the MOT, which uh, if you're watching from abroad, the MOT is an annual inspection that we have to have done in the UK anyway, where similar things are checked. But they don't take anything off on the MOT, they just do a visual inspection as best that they can. I'm happy with all the suspension components, I'm happy with the condition of the brake pipe and the flexes. 
but again who knows i may i may decide to change these flexi brake pipes um, in the future just because they're the original brake pipes there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with them but you know this car's getting on a bit now it's uh, it was built in 2006 and uh, sometimes for peace of mind it's a good idea to renew uh, things like flexi pipes so that might be something to consider in the future we'll see um, but for, for now I'm happy that it's all serviceable I'm happy with the suspension as well so yeah peace of mind the only thing is now I've got the same task to do on the front as well so all four corners you can do these same inspections that I've uh, done today and then you can have a conclusion of of where your vehicle's at and whether anything needs doing in the future so all we need to do now is get the wheel back on and torque those uh, wheel nuts back up sorry about that background noise there's my neighbor grinding so another top tip which again in sadly is not done in the dealerships just because they don't take the wheel off what I'm doing is I'm just using a little bit of brake grease and I'm just putting a very small film of um, grease on the contact surfaces so where the alloy contacts the hub which is there, 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 there and there and then a little bit on that uh, taper and then when you do need to take the wheel off it'll come off and it won't be seized on because what tends to happen is um, well, I'll give you an example my Audi from uh, 20, 2020 has it's had one service from Audi and the wheels have um, they've not removed the wheels yet on that service and uh, now the wheels have actually been off because they've been off for new tyres but if the wheels didn't need new tyres then there's a good chance that those wheels well not a good chance the wheels will have been on since 2020 and it's now 2023 and it's it's coming up for a service soon the Audi but you know what I don't even know if they'd take the wheels off again on the second service um, And then you get you get basically uh, a reaction between the alloy and the uh, the steel brake disc and they they seize together and then they're a right shoe on to get off. So there we go. We've got a nice coating, just a, a very thin coating of. I've just used a bit of um, brake grease, uh, Ceratec uh, from Mintex, just to uh, prevent that from sticking on so that's the wheel all inspected and ready to go back on so we've looked at the tire we've inspected the inside of the wheel for cracks we've given it a bit of a clean and we've um, put a little bit of grease on the contact points there just be careful with this type of wheel nut it uses a a shoulder as you can see so it has to actually go in to a hole on the wheel and then obviously it goes down until it hits that washer so I always start these by hand and I wind them in by hand as far as they can go these are not ideal for electric air guns or uh, sorry electric air electric impact guns or pneumatic air guns really you shouldn't be starting these off with those that type of equipment because it'd be very easy to damage the alloy this needs to be located properly in the hole in the wheel before it's wound in. So I'm using the nut on the end of my extension and socket and I'm just going to wind them in 
because I can tell if it starts to block I can move the wheel a little bit that's gone straight in that so that was just luck that I lined the wheel up in the right position and the wheel's gone on a lot easier into position because we we put that bit of grease on the mating surfaces So I know they've gone all back in the right position now, that's the locking wheel now. And then what I tend to do is to just give them a bit of a snug up before dropping the wheel back on the ground and then I'll use a torque wrench. To make the final tightening of the wheels. So 124 newton meters or 92 pounds feet of torque um, is the setting for the Jaguar XK. notice I'm going rather than going round I'm going across just to, to even out the um, the pull of the wheel as it's on its way in so yeah if you're not confident with tightening wheels correctly then getting all of the torque wrench just to do your final check is is a good piece of advice so just need to store the locking up away now and job done So I hope you enjoyed that uh, Life on Cars video there, just going through some preventative maintenance uh, checks on this uh, Jaguar XK and obviously uh, what you've seen today can be applied to any vehicle really um, in terms of uh, safety checks. So this is going to be part one of uh, a series of videos that I'm going to do around preventative maintenance. Uh, so coming along very soon, hopefully we'll see some more videos, uh, maybe looking in the engine bay, having a talk about some uh, safety checks, preventative maintenance again. Uh, we'll use the Jaguar uh, for these as well. So uh, if you do like the video, uh, please comment. I'll get back to you with any uh, questions as best I can. Please like and please subscribe. And uh, I hope to see you very soon on some more projects and car related videos. Thanks for watching and take care.